Hey guys and welcome to today's video. We're going to be taking a look at the Boss RC5 and hopefully helping you not only improve your basic looping technique but uh, perhaps show you some of the other things that you didn't know you could do or you're not familiar with yet. example I'd like to show you how to simply save a memory or to back up to the computer, change the display, add a rhythm, change the drum beat using an expression pedal, using an external foot switch and some of the things that they can allow you to do. So if you're already familiar with the basics like overdubbing and clearing then feel free to skip along the timeline to one of the topics that you're looking for. So if you've never looped before, then let me show you what happens. So you're going to strike the pedal whilst playing an idea, then you strike it again and it's going to play back. Now the trick here is to count yourself in so that you don't kind of panic with your, your foot when you're stamping the pedal. So something like this. So you count yourself in, a one, two, three, and three, four. and it's a double tap to stop. Now, I just made sure it was a one bar phrase, and this is really important because if you do, you know, like a 20 second phrase, you're not really practicing the technique of looping, uh, you know, and also it takes a long time for you to realize if you've created a good loop or not. So keep your phrases short in the beginning. So let's erase that and have another go. Hold it down for two seconds. <laughs> then we're ready to start again. Uh, let's try something a little bit different. Um, something funky. One, two, three, four. Okay, so there again, keeping it nice and short. And remember, count yourself in. Uh, this is a great test of your timing generally as a, as a player. Um, sometimes we forget how important it is to keep the foot going or to just simply try to feel the tempo that you're playing at. So the basic technique is like this. One, two, three, four, stomp, two, three, four, stomp. Okay, so you're hitting on the one and then the next one. So it's one, two, three, four, one, one, two, three, four, one or stomp, two, three, four, stomp. So let's erase that and have another go. So. Try a different phrase. One, two, three, four. Okay, cool. Now we've got a basic pattern. That was a two bar phrase that time. Let's add another phrase to that. So what you want to do is when you hit the pedal, it will play back. Maybe you want to practice the next thing you want to record. And then when you're ready, hit the pedal one more time and it will be in dub mode. So I've selected the bass sound and I'm going to record that. So firstly, I'm going to practice along three, four. And now I'm ready to jam along. Two, three. So now you've overdubbed once, you might want to overdub again. So let's pick a little phrase to overdub. Then I'm going to show you how to take it away. So this time I'm going to play a phrase and I'm going to overdub a few times. Two, three, four. <laughs> So 
So now I've got that down, I can bring it back at my leisure. For example, I held it down for two seconds, but it's still in the memory. So if I hold it down for another two seconds, it will come back like this. <laughs> Okay, so I think we're ready to add a rhythm. So you can see that it's flashing there and uh, there's also the button saying on and off. So that tells you that the drums are ready to come on and off. If I hit it once, that means the drums are ready. And usually it can detect the approximate tempo of the loop magically. I'm not sure how it does it, but let's see if it's done it this time. I don't know how it works, but it works most times. We'll do a few more examples in a second. Here's a shortcut to change tempo. If you simply tap the tempo button to the desired tempo, it will change it for you like this. I can speed up. I can also use the knob to do it manually. So if you want to change that drum beat, you hold the on and off button for two seconds like this, one, two, and you get some extra features like level, reverb, drum beat, and also type. If you push the knob down and turn it left and right, it goes up or down in increments of 10. So that's pretty handy if you want to turn it down really quick or change something very quickly. Moving on. Reverb level. Different patterns. different drum kits now let's turn the main loop down if you want to do that push the button in looper level and you can turn it down so now we can hear really what's going on Now something else which is pretty cool and I think unique to the RC5 or the RC500 which is the bigger model and that is you can change the display to suit you. At the moment I have it on something called status. This means it will either display record, play or dub. However you can also change it to have a few different modes like showing the beat or the name of the loop. So here's a few examples of that. So to change the display press setup push to confirm general, then click once to the right, then one more click and you'll find the status here. And you can change between all of these different variations. Let's take a look at some of them. Position is the position of the loop. Then it loops again. Okay. Let's change one more of these. Status and position. This is kind of cool. Okay, let's look at one more. You can get the beat as well. 
the beat and position this is pretty cool so just to explain what's happening there at the top you have one two three four and at the bottom you have the entire length of the loop so one more time one two three four one two three and change two three four one two okay so let's say you've created the perfect loop and you want to save it very simply you press setup and memory together it will ask you if you'd like to write it press down on the knob it will ask you where you would like to save it so you can change it to be any position but for the moment let's put it back to where it was memory 8 simply hit it again and your loop is saved if you would like to name the memory press memory scroll across to where it says name confirm and this is how you do it press down to change the character let's let's call it hello okay so we now have the h press it down move on to the next one we already have an e let's go to the next character press it in change to an l press it in okay now if you would like to delete a character press to select it push down twist to the left it deletes it okay same again same again okay if you would like to use the number system press down to select it twist once for a capital a push and twist you get the lowercase push and twist and you get the numbers if you push and twist one more time then you have all these characters to choose from and now that's been saved bear in mind it will save the looper level and the rhythm level specifically to that memory Here's a really cool function. If you're struggling with the basic technique, there's something called auto record. What that allows you to do is rather than press record with your foot, it waits for the first note that's played. So you can count yourself in, play the note, and then you simply stomp the pedal and it should hopefully be in time. Okay, so let me show you how to do that. Go to a blank memory, press the memory button, the loop option, push down the knob, go across, past these modes, auto record, press the knob, switch it to on, and then it will be ready to listen to your first note. So you press it once, okay? So now it's waiting to hear something. So three, four. <laughs> Okay, so we've recorded, overdubbed, added rhythm, changed the display. What else can we do? Well, we can start to add other pedals. For example, we can add an expression pedal. This can turn the volume up and down of the loop, or if you've loaded in a, a WAV file, then it can change the entire backing track. you set it. We can also use an external foot switch which allows us to use two controls. As standard it is set to be a stop and memory increase. If you would like to you can set it to be memory increase and decrease or up and down.
now we've customized the RC5 pretty much to how you'd like it, hopefully, it might be a good idea to back it up to the computer. So there's a few ways of doing this. Firstly, if you plug it in directly to your computer, it should recognize it straight away because it doesn't require drivers because it's class compliant. What that means is it should show up as a hard drive and when you click on the Roland folder, it says data and WAV. The thing to do is drag the entire folder and that will then be a complete backup of the RC5. Also, you can go into the WAV memories and simply copy the WAV file and save it that way. If you want to add WAV files to the RC5, I recommend the best way of doing it is through the Boss Tone Central app. The reason for this is because you want to make sure that the quality of your WAV file matches the pedal. And uh, if you haven't done it correctly, and you just try to drag it into the memory, it may not work. It may say unsupported file. By using the app, it will actually make sure it converts the file to the correct quality. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, feel free to re-watch it if you didn't get it all. Uh, good luck with your looping journey, and I'll see you on the next video.